Hello everyone, I'm Greg Karlovitz from the Hydrologic Engineering Center. Welcome to our course on statistical methods in hydrology. This video is part two of four on the topic of extreme value theory and we'll discuss order statistics and their role in extreme value analysis. Let's get started. Order statistics are a way of looking at data based on rank. In our sample on the left, the data are listed in the order they were recorded. The first observation was 19, and then the next observation in time was 20, and so on. If we sort the data, we could summarize the data in a different way. Here we show the data sorted from largest to smallest, mainly because in hydrology we are most often concerned with the largest value. The order that these observations were observed is lost. Often though, that order isn't necessarily very important. If we renumber the observations where 1 is the smallest and n is the largest, and n is the number of observations in our sample, we get the order statistics. Order statistics are differentiated by putting their rank index in parentheses. If you see x subscript 1 in parentheses, that means the smallest observation or the sample minimum. x subscript n in parentheses is the sample maximum. For this sample, x sub 1 is 8 and x sub n is 24. From the order statistics, you can compute the range, which is always x sub n minus x sub 1. For this sample, it is 16. One note is about the sample median. When n is an odd number, the sample median is an order statistic, meaning the median corresponds directly to one of the observations in the sample and can be found by looking at the x sub n plus 1 over 2 order statistic. When n is an even number, as in this sample, the sample median is not an order statistic, but is an average of two order statistics. A rank plot is one way to look at the data set based on order statistics. Simply plot the rank of the data on x and the value of the data on y, and you produce a rank plot. It is easy to convert the rank plot into an empirical quantile plot by dividing the rank by the sample size, which produces an estimate for the cumulative distribution function. However, this has the limitation that it estimates the non-exceedance probability for the largest observation to be 1, meaning that the largest value cannot be exceeded. It raises the question, do you really think that another sample from this population will never exceed the value 24? When a random sample from a population is taken, and the cumulative distribution function is computed for all of the sample values, the resulting cumulative probabilities have a uniform distribution on the interval 0, 1. So if your sample is 10 random values, and the population cumulative distribution function is f of x, you would apply f of x to each of the 10 values, getting a value between 0 and 1. The distribution of those 10 values from the CDF is the uniform distribution. This is the opposite principle from inverse transform sampling. Instead of starting with values and going to exceedance probabilities, uniform distributed, via the CDF, we go from exceedance probabilities, uniform distributed, to values via the inverse CDF, or quantile function. This example shows how we go from sample values of the population to the cumulative probabilities. First, we take a large number of samples from a population. In this example, we assume the population has a standard normal distribution, and we draw 1,000 samples from it. The histogram of these samples is shown on the left, and it makes the familiar bell curve shape. Next, we take each of those 1,000 values, and we evaluate the CDF at each value. Using the CDF is a deterministic operation. It's not random, and we're not making any new samples. The CDF is shown in the middle as the black curve. This is the CDF for the standard normal distribution, which we have assumed is the distribution of the population. Evaluating the CDF for each point involves going from the values on the x-axis up to the curve and reading off the corresponding y-value. In this plot, you can see the red lines are dense in the middle and more sparse in the tails when you look along the x-axis. This is how data that are normally distributed typically behave. Once you convert them into CDF values by reading off the y value for each data point on the curve, you can see that the shape of the data change. They are much more regularly spread out along the y axis. We see the histogram of the CDF values on the right side, which have a little bit of noise, but definitely don't look bell curve shaped anymore. With a large enough sample, this histogram would have the same height in every bar, indicating a uniform distribution. So why do we care about this? 
Well, when we look at the behavior of the same order statistic, for example, the sample maximum, which is labeled x sub n in parentheses, across repeated samples from the population, it will not have the same exceedance probability. The sample maximum varies with each sample, and by taking the CDF of each sample maximum and plotting a density for it, we can see how the cumulative probability varies for the sample maximum value. In this demo, we generate a very large number of samples of size 100 from a standard normal distribution. In each of these samples, we take the sample maximum and compute its cumulative probability. Then, we plot this huge number of exceedance probabilities on an empirical density. Ordinarily, we would expect the largest value in a sample of 100 to be exceeded on average 1% of the time for a cumulative probability of 99%. In the density on the right, we could see the peak of the density around 0.99 as we would expect. However, we see that there is variation in this value, including a negative skewness and a long tail off to the left. So what does this show? First, it shows that the sample maximum has an uncertain exceedance probability. We can't be sure exactly what the magnitude of the sample maximum or its corresponding cumulative probability will be in any sample we see this variability in the density plot. Also shown on the graph is the mean and the median of the sampled values. We see the effect of the long left tail and negative skewness. The mean is to the left of the median. Despite the uncertainty, what we do see is that the uncertainty in the exceedance probability has stable behavior. The exceedance probability of the sample maximum has a beta distribution with parameters 100 and 1 and it is shown in red on the plot on the right drawn over the empirical density from our simulation experiment. It turns out that the beta distribution can be used for the exceedance probability of any order statistic by changing its parameters. If you use the rank as the first parameter, where 1 is the sample minimum and n is the sample maximum, and the formula n plus 1 minus the rank for the second parameter, you can develop the probability distribution for the cumulative probability of any order statistic. We've talked about plotting positions before, but the exercise we just went through showed us exactly how these plotting position estimators are derived. Remember that plotting positions are estimators for the cumulative probability of a value in a sample based only on its rank. In other words, plotting positions are functions of order statistics. Now that we have a model for the cumulative probability of each order statistic, we can see how we get to two of the most often used plotting positions in hydrology, the median and the Weibull plotting positions. The median plotting position provides the median estimate of the cumulative probability for an order statistic. The plotting position estimator is shown here based on the rank of the data, i, and the sample size, n. The values here are an approximation for the median of a beta distribution. The Weibull, or mean, plotting position is shown below. This is the exact mean of the beta distribution using the rank and the sample size. This formula is probably familiar to you if you've used plotting positions before, as it is one of the most popular to use. In the table in the upper right, we see how these values compare based on our sample experiment from before. We used 100,000 samples of size 100 and looked at the cumulative probability for the sample maximum. The first row compares the sample median for the cumulative probability with the value computed from the plotting position estimator. In this case, they are equal out to the third decimal place with some Monte Carlo error involved. For the mean in the second row, we see that the values are equal. It's great when theory and reality line up. The consequence of this finding is that we can express the uncertainty in the true cumulative probability for each order statistic in a sample. When we plot data using an empirical quantile plot with the exceedance probability or cumulative probability on the x-axis, and the data value on the y-axis with the estimate for the x value coming from a plotting position estimator, we're faced with a choice. Which estimator should we use? Well, let's consider the sample of 100 points from a standard normal distribution. We have the median plotting position estimator in blue and the mean estimator in red. Each point is also labeled with a dotted black line, which has the 5% and 95% uncertainty range for cumulative probability using the beta distribution. The first thing we see is that the estimators are not very different in the middle of the data. This is because the uncertainty is fairly symmetrical and the mean and the median are likely to be close to each other. In the middle of the data, choice of plotting position estimator does not matter much. However, once we get out to the tails, we see that the uncertainty is asymmetrical and very wide. 
We also see that the plotting position estimators are quite different, especially for the largest or smallest two or three values. It is important to keep in mind that plotting positions are uncertain, especially in the tails, and that comparing two samples to each other, or a sample to a distribution, when the sample is plotted using plotting position estimators, has this uncertainty as well. The reason we cover this topic in extreme value theory is because we're concerned with the predictability of extremes, typically the sample maximum. We show here that the exceedance probability of the sample maximum has a regular behavior that we can model with the beta distribution. It turns out that this result is useful for more than just the sample maximum, which is a happy byproduct. Now we have to pivot to the opposite question. Instead of estimating the cumulative probability of an order statistic, what does the distribution of the values of an order statistic look like? Well, this depends on its rank, the sample size, and also the population distribution function, f of x. Fortunately, we'll find that this is fairly straightforward for the sample minimum and sample maximum due to extreme value theory. In this video, we discussed order statistics and their role in extreme value analysis. Three key points to take away from this video are Order statistics look at data in a data set based on their rank in that data set. The true exceedance probability for an order statistic is uncertain. When we use plotting positions to represent the empirical distribution of our data, the uncertainty in those plotting positions can be modeled with a beta distribution. Thanks, and tune into the next video in this series on extreme value theory to learn about the first extreme value theorem.